Problems with the Stuart steam pump part 2, making and fitting gaskets to stop the steam leaks. This steam powered boiler feed pump is the one that's fitted to a Stuart number 7 plant that I'm working on. I sold this pump to one of my customers and the customer asked me to fit it to the number 7 steam plant. It's very well made, it runs beautifully on compressed air but I did have a slight problem with it on steam. I've already dismantled the pump once. The problem was found to be the shuttle piston sticking in the piston cylinder. This was an easy fix, I just put the shuttle piston in the chuck in the lathe and I showed this in part 1. It seemed to work ok but there were leaks around the steam cylinder which is very common with these small pumps. I also found that the steam chest was very easily distorted if I over tightened any of the bolts. The first problem is to make it less sensitive to movement of the steam chest. I'm removing these studs for the last time because I'm going to discard them. I'm going to replace the studs with long bolts. The first thing to do though is to fully dismantle the pump. In this part of the clip I'm removing the collars from the valve spindle. There are five bolts in the end cylinder cover, but only one of them holds the cylinder cover to the steam chest, and it's very close indeed to the hole in the steam chest where one of the studs fit. I never did like this design and I'm really surprised they didn't think of an alternative, but anyway, such is life. There are two things wrong with the steam chest cover, one is the grey paint is horrible that's on the top of it, and the other problem is that the studs are quite a tight fit in the mounting holes. The first thing to do is to give the bottom part of the steam chest cover a gentle rub on a piece of wet to dry sandpaper to remove any gasket residue. The next job is to remove every bit of the Loctite 542 that I applied to the gasket. It was my failed attempt at repairing a damaged gasket. Never mind, you can't win them all. What I'm doing here is removing all of the grey paint from the top surface of the steam chest cover. Once again, using some wet to dry sandpaper as you can see here. There's nothing wrong with the seal of the front cylinder cover on the pump. In this clip I'm giving the cylinder cover a bit of a scrape to remove the Loctite 542 that I applied and generally clean up the surface. And here I'm getting right into the corner with a cloth. Time to make some new gaskets. The problem is that all the gasket material I have is too thick for this application. Oh shock horror, what am I going to do? The original gaskets fitted to the pump were very thin and as you can see this one's damaged as well. I'm going to improvise. I could use brown paper but that's too weak, but the paper backing on wet to dry sandpaper isn't too weak, it's very good. This is a piece of 1500 grit wet to dry sandpaper and I'm going to make a gasket out of it. First thing to do is to hold the original gasket on top of the sandpaper and cut out the shape. And then by holding the original piece of gasket material against the wet to dry sandpaper on the paper side, using my special thin felt tip marker pen, I mark the positions of the holes onto the gasket material. And then I punch the holes using a hole punch. Note that two of the holes in the gasket material are smaller than the others. I made a gasket for the front and a gasket for the underside of the steam chest and I sealed the gaskets in place using some special stuff which is very much like Boss White and if you're using any kind of sealant do not use silicone. Boss White's been around for years, this is just a modern equivalent, but you mustn't use too much because you will block up the holes in the steam chest and you really don't want to do that. Now it's time to fit the end cylinder cover, but before doing this I apply plenty of oil to the valve spindle and also to the shuttle piston. Now it's time to put it all back together, it's held together using 7BA bolts, and once again just like the rear, this is the only 7BA bolt that holds the front cylinder cover to the steam chest. In my opinion this is a very weak design. It's no surprise really that these small steam pumps generally seem to leak slightly at the joints. What I'm doing at the moment is just tightening up the collars on the valve rod. I'll set the position properly once I get it running on compressed air. To make the gasket for the other end I'm just using some commercial gasket material because the thickness of this is unimportant. Usual method, I drew round the old gasket, punched out the centre part, then used a small drum sander in my Proxon motor tool to cut the centre part to the right diameter. Nothing new here, I've shown this many times in my videos. Once I'd fitted the end cap with all its bolts and the new gasket, 
It's time for a compressed air test. As you can see, I've fitted the airline to it. Before that, I'd like to adjust the glands. This thing, by the way, is called a C-spanner, a very useful tool to have, because this is how you're supposed to tighten the gland nuts. Here's the pump running in slow motion because it goes so fast you can't see where the pump ram is. You can clearly see that the pump ram is not going full travel. The travel of the pump ram is controlled by adjusting the two collars. When the setting of the two collars is correct, the pump ram will travel as shown here. They may need readjusting when it's in steam and under load when it's pumping water. The thing I'm interested in is the fact that the steam cylinder is not leaking at all. So I'm going to put it back onto the steam plant and try again with it. That's it for this episode. Stay safe and well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.